Alright, so what's up guys, Best of Games here, and my dog decided to move the second I did my intro. Anyway, so today we are going to talk about the top 10 basic neutral cards in Hearthstone. And of course, this is my opinion. You may have a different opinion. If you do, let me know in the comments down below. Maybe you think I've got it right on the head, and who knows, let me know. But without further crap, we're just going to go right into this. And we're going to start off with number 10, which is the Frost Wolf Warlord. Um, so this guy comes in at number 10 because he's better than the other cards that aren't on this list. But he is very situational. Um, at the absolute worst, you're going to play him and he's going to be a 4-4. And a 4-4 isn't going to do you much good for 5 mana. But if you have a board already there... Playing him with two creatures out means he's a 6-6. Six, six. If you play him with three creatures out, he's a 7-7. Seven, seven. You might not want to make him a 7-7, seven, because seven, then he'll gonna, he's going to get hit by a big game hunter. But um, he's, he's a pretty decent card. And if you have cards that some of them I am going to talk about on this list, and some of them I'm not. But uh, pretty much he is he's a decent card. Um... If you play a very zoo deck, or you play like Implosion the turn before and they don't clear all that stuff, and then you play him down, like, you know, he's a pretty strong threat that they have to deal with. And silencing him doesn't make him a not threat anymore, he's still a problem. So, number 10. Um, number 9, we have the Dragonling mechanic. Um, this actually works very well with the. Warlord, as I just said, you play this guy on turn four, assume that they can't clear your Dragonling mechanic and the 2 1 Dragonling, then the Warlord is a 6 6, and bam, right there, it's, it's already good. But that's assuming that the opponent isn't going to actually play anything on turn four, which is insane because they will. Um, Decent card for 4 mana, but there are much better basic cards that you can include in your deck, especially if you're just starting out playing Hearthstone, or even if you've been playing Hearthstone for a while. Um, there, There's definitely better options than this. So, move on to number 8. The Garibushi, Gar, Garibashi. There we go. Berserker. I don't know why I couldn't say that. But uh, he is interesting in different ways. Um... Because he's 5 mana, 2, 7. But every time that he takes damage, he gets 3 attack. Um, so, if you play the right classes, this guy can automatically just come out and be a 5, 6. Which is pretty good for a 5 mana drop. If you have a combo card like Whirlwind in the Hunter... Uh, Hunter. In the... Uh, Holy shit. Warrior class. Um, or if you play a mage and you have it's turn 7 and you don't have a better play, you can slap this thing down and then ping it with your um, hero power, and it becomes 5-6. Um, and if it takes one hit every turn, or if you have the... Or if you're playing the priest class, you hit into something with it, it becomes a 5-whatever, then you heal it up with your hero power the next turn, or, you know, so on and so forth. There are many ways that you can make this guy pretty strong, um, especially in the priest class, actually, because you can play down the card that lets you double its health, and then, you know, things like that. Or in the warrior class, where you can use the, I think it's called damaged or something, um... I don't remember what it is, but it's plus three, plus three to a damaged minion. Um, and if he's already damaged, he's pretty strong as it is. So he, this is a very good card, um, especially in Arena. Um, a lot of these basic cards you're only really going to see picked a lot in Arena because they're better than some class cards. And when you get choices like this and like some crap that no one cares about, you're going to pick this. So, I mean, this is more of an arena kind of t list, but if you're just starting out, you might want to consider these as cards, too. Um, because you won't have as much cards to go through and choose through when you're starting. So, we move on to number 7, which is the Gnomish Inventor. The Gnomish Inventor is a very simple card. He's actually... You actually see him in some top-tier decks at the moment, where he is... 
just played for a draw card on turn four. You slap him down, you draw a card, you have a little bit of a card advantage, and he's also a 2-4. Um, it doesn't do much. There are a lot of things that can deal four damage to a creature on turn four, but it's not terrible either. Like, he's going to get some... He's going to trade into something. He may not kill it, but he's going to trade it into something. He's going to be useful, and also drawing that card is very useful. It's much better than the Novice Engineer, which is 2 mana, 1-1, one, one, and you draw a card that's too early and that's too weak in the in the beginning of the game for you to use. So if you need a draw, and if you need to put some draw into your deck, no much inventor right there. Uh, number 6, we got Stormwind Champion. Now, you'd think for basic cards, he'd probably be one of the best, because, well, I mean, he's the strongest, really, um, besides Core Hound, which it's not on this list because it's a crap card. Um, don't pick it. Yeah, I don't care if you're just starting out playing the game, don't pick Core Hound. It's a terrible card. Um, but Stormwind... Mr. Stormwind Champion over here is is a pretty good card, um, especially if you're already winning. If you're not already winning, he might not do very much on turn 7. You might throw him down and it does absolutely nothing because he's just a 6-6. Six, six. Um, on turn 7, if you don't have any board presence, if you don't have anything that's going to be able to attack that very second, you're better off playing a War Golem, which is not on this list either. Um, because at least that's a 7-7 seven, seven for 7 mana, and that's a little bit better than 6, but not by much. Uh, number 5, we got the Shattered Sun Cleric, which you actually see in some constructed decks that some big people use here and there, um, because it does give the buff of a 1-1 one, one to another minion of your choice, well, on your side of the field. Um, and that's incredibly useful to... You play down a guy on turn two. You're going first. Um, so say in the most terrible instance, you play down um, Novice Engineer on turn two. Um, and you draw a card. The next turn, on the opponent's turn, they play down a, I don't know, 2-3. Um, I mean, they they throw down like a Puddle Stomper or a Bloodfen Raptor or something like that, a 3-2, and you're looking at it like, oh, well, I can't kill that with my with my crappy 1-1 one, one that I just played for no reason because it shouldn't be in my deck. So, oh, look, I have a Shattered Sun Cleric. I can play that, buff that 1-1 one, one into a 2-2, two, two, and then trade into that. It's it's a simple thing, but sometimes that that 1 damage is all you really need, and this card is a pretty good provider of that. Moving on, we got the Acidic Swamp Ooze at number 4, and I put Ooze very high up here because even if if you're just starting out in Hearthstone, you want to be able to deal with things like the Fiery fiery War Axe or the Fiery Win Axe, or the Rogue Class, or basically um, Paladins using um, True Silver Champion, things like that. And the Acidic Swamp Ooze, if you don't have Harrison Jones, Pretty much the Acidic Swamp Ooze is your replacement for Harrison Jones. Um, you'll see this in actual decks if they don't have Harrison Jones, because they need to get rid of those weapons to stop them from, you know, being patron warriors and things like that. And he's also a 3-2, which is, I mean, even if you're playing against a class that's not going to throw up a weapon, he's a good 2-drop. So, hey, that's why he's so high up on the list. Uh, number 3, we got the Boulder Fist Ogre. Um... He is out of BGH range, and this is what makes him a good card, just right off the bat. A 6-7 for 6 mana. So he's already a good stat creature, right there, right off the bat. 6 mana, if you play a 6 mana card, you expect a 6-6. Six, six. He's a 6-7. Six, Absolutely no effect whatsoever, but he's a presence. And you can't just get rid of him with BGH, you have to pretty much attack into him. And since it's a 7 health card, it's going to take a couple of things for for them to smack into it to get rid of it. Um, he's pretty much kind of like a board clear, but not really. He's a really good card. And if you ever see him in Arena, 
chances are you're going to pick Boulder Fist Ogre over whatever your other choices are, unless it's like a Flame Strike or something even more crazy. Um, so Boulder Fist Ogre is just an incredible card, and I mean, it, unfortunately, it doesn't get as much play in Constructed nowadays, but uh, it, it's still a good card if you're just starting out. out just throw it in there. It'll do you wonders. Um, moving on to number two, we have the Chillwind Yeti. And the Yeti here is, if you were just starting out in Hearthstone, this card needs to be in every single deck. It's the same reasoning behind Boulder Fist Ogre, except that it's cheaper. And if you have two of them in your hand and it's turn eight, you can throw two of them down at the same time. You can't play two Boulder Fist Ogres unless you're playing the Druid class and you have Innervate. Um, but that's even turn 10. Like, you, Chillwind Yeti is a better Boulder Fist Ogre just earlier in the game, which will do wonders for your game. If you are playing Hearthstone and you just started out and you don't have Yeti in your deck, take something else out and put Yeti in your deck. If you have Piloted Shredder, which is a new GVG card, or relatively new GVG card, Put that in your deck instead, because that is a better Yeti. Pretty much. Um, that's that's all I have to say about Yeti. Yeti is pretty much Boulder Fist Ogre, but better. Um, and then that brings us to our number one, which is the Senjin Shieldmaster, or as people like to call him, Tazdingo. Um, pretty much, if you are playing any sort of deck and you don't have access to the Naxxramas cards, specifically Sludge Belcher, Shieldmaster is your best taunt. You don't, want to pit, you don't want to put Lord of the Arena in your deck. Lord of the Arena cr is total crap. Six mana for six five, and it's a taunt. Not worth it. Senjin Shieldmaster, completely, 100% worth it. Um, he is the best basic taunt, and probably the best basic card that there is. Um, I only edged him out over Yeti, just slightly, because of the fact that he is taunt, and that 3 damage doesn't necessarily break it. Um, but pretty much, Shieldmaster is the Yeti, just minus 1 attack, and taunt. That's the trade-off there. And it is... By far the most just used card that I've seen in any constructed decks higher than basic level Hearthstone play is you see Shieldmaster in decks. You see him more often than Yeti, you see him more often than Boulder Fist, you see him more often than pretty much any other basic card. Um, so pretty much he is the top of the list. If you don't have Shieldmaster in your basic deck, when you're playing the game just starting out, you fucked up. And that's pretty much it. So that's the whole top 10. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you guys disagree with any of my picks, leave a comment down below. Let me know. Um, don't be a dick about it. And don't ask me to sub to your shit, because I don't care. Um, but if you have some constructive criticism, please leave it in the comments below. I will definitely read it. I will definitely respond to you. And uh, yeah, if you like the video, then hit that like button, and I will see you guys on the next video. Peace out.